Okay guys, so right now what we're gonna be doing is some gunfire desensitization with um, some of our protection dogs and also our police dogs. It's something that we always make a point of doing. Um, it's really important to make sure that the dogs are okay around gunfire. You never know what situation these dogs are gonna be in and we like them to be prepared for all circumstances. So what we're gonna be utilizing here, we've got this, this is a 22 in the GSG kind of style. Um, you know, but it's a 22, basically it's a, it's a Ruger 22, right? On, a lot of people look at this and be like, oh, it's an assault rifle. It's not an assault rifle. It shoots very small bullets um, and 22, like you can maybe kill a fox with one. Um, that's about it. So, uh, but you know, it looks cool and it's black. So people get excited about it. But um, this is a good gun to start with because the sound is going to be uh, maybe less than some of the other options that we have. So the only other gun I'm going to shoot today is... I'm gonna shoot this nine mil high point. I know a lot of people don't like the high points. I like the high point. I think for your money, it's a lot of bang for your buck. Um, and it's a nine mil carbine. So um, fantastic uh, little gun. And it makes uh, certainly a lot more noise than the 22. So I think between all these things, we're gonna have plenty of sound there and we can really see the dog's reaction to gunfire. Okay, so he's a little excited. Tell him to sit. Bring him over, sit. He, they both know some obedience. Maybe do some obedience and I'll do some uh, shooting. Oh, I shot the string off the gong. Good <laughs> These guys are really good, really, really good. The other guy, not so much, so we're gonna have to bring him under control. So I'm just gonna reload, and we'll do it again with Evo. You can see Evo got a little excited about it, which is normal because, you know, a lot of these dogs grow up hearing whip cracks in the uh, protection training. A lot of people, why do you use a whip? Well, most dogs that have grown up hearing the whip cracking during protection are completely fine with the sound of gunfire. The problem is sometimes they get a little too excited and we want them neutral. We, won't, we don't want them actually excited by gunfire. Where's Calvin? No, he wanted to shoot. He said he never shot a gun before in his life. I'm gonna let him shoot if he wanted to shoot. Uh, just keep him under control. Like we want him calm. Like, no, he's getting excited. And he thinks it's protection. Oh, I thought he was running for his life. No, Evo doesn't give a fuck. Well, that's Dude. why he came in. I'll fire off a few more and then I'll go fix my gong. I shot the string right off the gong and it fell. Seats. Seats. No. Seats. Good. Seats. Good boy. Good seats. Good boy. Good boy, Good boy buddy. Good seats. Oh. Pretty good, eh? Calvin, this is an easy one. Is it? Wow. Yeah. You, right? No, I've had it. I've had this for years. Oh. And drop the S. Drop the safety. The okay. safety, right? Yeah. Good. You should be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, look at this guy. Flat. Calvin has a hidden talent. Jesus yeah, Christ, is. two gongs in a row on He's like one guy nice. shot. <laughs> Holy shit. There you go. Damn. So whenever a dog shows any kind of avoidance behavior on the gunfire, what we're gonna do is we're gonna step back, 
even a sensitivity is something we keep an eye out on because the problem with something as, as extreme as gunfire is you might see it as a very small thing in the beginning, but it can actually grow and grow because it, you think about how sensitive a dog's ears are and then something as loud as gunfire, it, over a sustained period of time, it's actually you know, progressively more and more unpleasant. And we did fire off a lot of rounds. So now what we're gonna do is, you know, um, this isn't the solution for every dog, but whenever we see like some sensitivity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pair the gunfire with something extremely pleasant. Um, and we don't want the dog to become active, but we do want the dog to become more attentive, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna see how it kind of goes. After every shot, you're gonna reward him. Yep. Good. Go away a little more. Good. And now ball. Good, play tug. Play, play, play. Good. 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 Right away, gunfire reward. Beautiful. Good job, Ivy. And we're just pairing those two things. Yep. And just the second you hear it, mark and pop that ball. Good. All right, guys, I think we got it. The dogs are all pretty good, thankfully. You never know, sometimes you have one that's like terrified of gunfire. So like, you know, even though you do everything and you think they're good, you never know. So he looks like he's, they, they all look pretty good. I'm happy with them. So we saw a couple of different things there. I mean, there were some dogs that didn't care at all, you know, and that was nice. And then we saw some dogs that either were overexcited by the gunfire or we saw one dog that over progressive exposure to the gunfire, he started to show a little bit of avoidance behavior, which can happen. So what we did was we took the dog aside, the one that was active, we got him calm and we taught him he must be calm for the gunfire. This doesn't mean anything one way or the other. And then with the other dog, um, that was uh, showing a little bit of avoidance behavior. It wasn't extreme, just a little bit. You could see it was uncomfortable for him. What we did was we married it to his favorite thing. And it's not every situation that you want to use like a toy that involves like any kind of biting. Like so if, if I have a dog who's like super high drive and a, you know, I'm going to marry the gunfire to a tug or to a ball, it can actually be a problem where the gunfire actually excites the dog so much they actually even bite the handler. It's a common problem. Um, but when I see some avoidance behavior and I see that the dog is becoming a little bit suppressed from the gunfire, what I do then is I utilize that because the dog can handle that level of arousal in that circumstance. And you could see that the dog quickly became very, very open very, very quickly then with the gunfire because he is like, oh, the gunfire just means that the ball is probably going to come or maybe food will come. And now the dog has a positive association. So this is, this is it in a nutshell. It's not overly complicated. Of course, you work your thresholds, right? You say, oh, okay, is it maybe too much for him close up? Let me go a little bit of a distance. Oh, it's good a little distance. Let me get, let me get a little closer, a little closer, a little closer until you're like, you know, as close to the dog as you can be and you see that he's not uncomfortable. For some sensitive dogs, like I said before, it's normal, right? It's just that progressive assault on their ears. So over time, they're like, hey, this kind of hurts me. Like, please stop, right? So of course, if you're gonna be doing this on a regular basis, you're gonna use cotton, you're gonna use um, uh, ear protection, so on and so forth for the dogs and for you. So anyways, that's gunfire for the dogs, guys. Good time, um, the dogs enjoyed it, everybody had fun. <laughs>